This gentleman, Jesse Hawley, is a very interesting character, mostly not just for his uh, interest in promoting the Erie Canal, but the way he went about it. So uh, Jesse Hawley was actually from Connecticut, but uh, when he came of age just after the American Revolution ended, he moved to western New York, uh, although more the, the Finger Lakes region of New York. And while he was there, he opened a mill where he, uh, I'm sorry, no, he did not open a mill. He became a flour merchant. And in this position, he would buy wheat from people in upstate New York, and then he would bring it to a mill to be milled and then sell it for profit thereafter. He was kind of, I don't want to call him a mill, middleman, but he was a distribution center, so to speak. But he found it very hard to transport his goods with the poor roadways, although they were trying to promote better roadways at that point, uh, and the poor, not just the poor roadways, uh, but there were very few canals, as we will get to. Uh, and he very quickly starts talking about uh, public works. As early as 1803, when he's just about 30 years old, he actually writes a letter to President Jefferson, which if you go to my article, I do have a link to the letter, which is fascinating because he writes to President Jefferson asking the federal government to start helping individual people. Now, President Jefferson was not the right president to ask for this kind of thing, uh, but additionally, what's really fascinating is in this first work, Jesse Hawley writes this, it's not even a work, it's just a letter to the president, to Jefferson, and he writes about, quote, capitalists who are uh, overcharging people for the land that they want to develop in central and western New York. Uh, and he actually says that he thinks that to expand the, quote, American empire, we will need to, the go federal government should be investing in helping people purchase land and actually very specifically helping set up the towns that were being established. Famously, after the Revolutionary War, upstate New York is one of many places that gave soldiers land as payment for their service. And oftentimes it was left up to these soldiers to go to that land and start the towns essentially on their own, although they were named by uh, employees of usually the states, they were, the people were supposed to set up the towns. But here we have Hawley recommending to Jefferson to use federal money to invest, to, to help invest in citizens and their ability to establish towns and invest directly into the towns. Nothing comes of this. It's just very interesting to note because also, you know, talking about capitalists in such a negative fashion is not something you really hear for another at least 50, 60 years. I mean, you know, this is five decades before Karl Marx starts getting published. So it's very interesting uh, that he's using these terms and speaking in this fashion. And again, he also uses the phrase American empire, which you didn't hear a ton at the time, although it wasn't necessarily unheard of to predict an empire. Uh, there were some people like Alexander Hamilton were hoping for just very that thing. <laughs> so now Holy continues to have problems selling his product because he is in, you know, the frontier of New York, this area was only just negotiated away from the Native Americans in what may be considered unfair treaties, uh, but still just uh, uh, taken for Americans to be using. Now, Hawley uh, continues to have not only promote bettering the area, but has a lot of trouble selling these products. So eventually he gets arrested for owing too much in debt. And he gets put in debtor's prison. And what's really fascinating is while he's in debtor's prison, he publishes a series of 16 essays that become extremely influential in building the Erie Canal. He publishes them anonymously under the name Hercules. And they're known as the Essays of Hercules, which is also linked to in the article, and which that itself is linked below if you want to check it out. Very interesting articles uh, because he was not necessarily an expert on any of these things, but he fi somehow got a hold of a lot of information and very specifically discusses like you want to start in this part of Buffalo uh, you're going to be traveling this distance before the gradient increases and you'll have to put a lock at these locations uh, you'll have you're going you know the the, the um, rise of the land I forget the the terminology I'm not a surveyor uh, but he essentially has the whole New York State surveyed out talks about building canals how deep you have to dig how transportation would work all things, and these are published in 1803, again, from debtor's prison, um, and they, they are so specific in how they address the implementation of what we now know as the Erie Canal, that it takes the idea of building canals. There were already, um, you know, General Philip Schuyler had already put some canals in. They were already trying to add canals to certain rivers, 
But this is the first time you really hear someone say, no, we're going from Buffalo to the Hudson, which will drag us straight down to New York City and the Atlantic Ocean. This is how it should go. And because he was so well-researched, somehow this very poorly educated man was so well-researched in what he wrote that it started the drive to build the Erie Canal, which about 15 years later would be started. And just about 20 years after he publishes these, the Erie Canal would be finalized. And eventually word gets out that Joseph Hawley is the one publishing who published under the name Hercules. Uh, again, not for a long time, just a few months while he's in debtor's prison. Well, about a year and a half he's in debtor's prison. And he's So he published these. Uh, word gets out that he was the author. And he actually ends up being elected to the state assembly because people were so behind him. Now, again, most of his ideas were a little too radical for people. As I mentioned earlier, he was talking about uh, certain, uh, I don't want to use modern political terms, but uh, talking... He sounded more like a communist than you might expect someone pre-communism to actually sound. Uh, so again, not everyone trusted him. They did put him in the house for a little bit, the, the state, New York State Assembly, where he helped further along the Erie Canal. He was already had already begun uh, since he was already a leader in canal building because of his understanding and expertise on the subject. He continued in that fashion uh, for just one term in the state assembly. Uh, then he does get elected to port collector in Genesee, which is a, a at the time was a port, a small port town. It's still a fairly small city in New York, uh, but a small port town. And then when the Erie Canal is completed in 1825, they had celebrations across New York state. This was a monumental task. Uh, Governor DeWitt Clinton, they called it DeWitt's Folly or, or Clinton's Folly or Clinton's Ditch. And then when it was completed, they were like, wow, I can't believe it worked. And one of these celebrations was, of course, at the western end of the canal in Buffalo, New York, where one of the keynote speakers was Joseph Hawley, who got to celebrate essentially 20 years of work uh, in the finalization of the canal he predicted. That is, in brief, the very fascinating life of Joseph Hawley. Hi, Lucas. Thank you for coming. I see you saying.